the serious, devoted <laughs> Zoomers here. We'll, get, we, um, we'll give them one more minute and then we'll get started and uh, hope not to keep you on Zoom for longer than your brains can handle, but uh, make it work. Let's see, I don't want that. So um, I'll tell you what we're going to start with. We're going to start by introducing ourselves. So we're going to go, we're going to talk about, we're going to say our name, our writing or history background, and the favorite book that we've recently read. And uh, I, I can start so you guys don't have to be embarrassed about like, how impressive the book that you choose needs to be. And I'll tell you that, um, uh, so my name is Elisa Karen and I am, my writing background is I wrote a memoir. I, well, I started as a songwriter, as you guys know. And, uh, and when I moved from New York City to rural New York Mills, Minnesota, um, I, I couldn't capture the entirety of that experience in a song or even an album, which I tried. Um, and then I decided I needed to write prose. So I started learning how to write prose and of course had the experience of thinking I knew how to write. And um, I, 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 I spent a few good years realizing how little I knew about writing at that point. Uh, and so then, then I wrote my book. Um, but the, just to let you know, the, my, my, a recent good book I read, just to make you feel better, I've been very, very stressed the last couple months because we were on a six month RV trip with two little boys and a husband and me and 200 square feet, 20,000 miles, 25 states, six months, five months. Yeah, it was overwhelming. So um, I started reading the Bridgerton romance novels, which, you know, that the show came out and um, Bridgerton was actually, they were written in like 2001, but the show just came out. Anyway, they're really well written romance. So just, you know, I do read like more highfalutin stuff sometimes, but like I went through the entire series except one of those books recently. Great thing to do when you're stressed. Genre. All right. Who, so Leroy, are you go? do I ask you these questions too? Or are you, you, you can, you can, sure. Ready? Uh, right. yeah. So I'm Leroy and Oscar Tanner um, and my writing and history background uh, I started writing poetry in high school, uh, and I actually, uh, was on my high school forensics team for poetry performance and gold medaled at the state competition in Wisconsin, um, in high school. Um, and in, uh, my undergraduate work, uh, I did research writing, um, actually presented, uh, research at some, uh, economics conferences in the Midwest. Um, as you can see, my background is like, wait, you're a librarian. Where's this going? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, I also, uh, taught high school for several years. And, uh, so I got to work with, uh, writing in a number of different forms. Um, and as far as history goes, there's, um, our family does a lot of, uh, of family history, genealogy, my, my cousin is actually a professional genealogist. And so um, there's always talking about writing family stories um, and thinking about um, what past generations have been through and what they've done and how we can learn from that and sharing that with our kids. And, and so that's something that uh, really um, gets me thinking usually. Um, let's see, a book that I've read recently that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm a librarian. You, sh you should never ask that question. Oh, right. <laughs> Unless I'm at the circulation desk giving a recommendation, they can do that. But um, let's see. Uh, I enjoy reading uh, children's literature. Uh, I mean, I have kids, but uh, it's interesting to see how writers take um, classical archetypes and themes from literature uh, across the world and many different um, cultures and, and myths and traditions and put their own spin on it and, the, and you know, use, use their own writing and make it their own. Um, recently read uh, a book based on 
uh, some traditional uh, Eastern European kind of dark folk tales um, called Uprooted. And, oh, uh, I love that book. It's one of my favorites. It was very good. It's very I love good. That book. I still haven't read the sequel yet, so I got to get there. There's but, a sequel? What's yeah, she, she wrote, I, I do not remember at the moment, but I, I can put it up. myself a note. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, and so that one was very good. Um, and uh, yeah, just keeping my, my eye out for, for different things to make me think. Um, uh, I guess also literature connected in, in books that I enjoy reading. Um, I speak Chinese. And so um, I love Chinese literature. Um, they have some great stories. And so I'm always on the lookout for those too. So. Lira, you are a fascinating person. There is much there to learn, I, I think. Okay, let's go by uh, order here. So Joanne, well, Beth got on first actually, even though we didn't see her. So Beth, let's start with you. I, um, I, um... So uh, yeah, Beth Zabel, um, Joanne and I are in a book club together. So this is- Oh my this, goodness, this is great. Yeah, yes. really good. Um, and we were supposed to be reading Crime and Punishment and I oh. could have finished it. Oh my God. You guys uh, are amazing. <gasps> so Dostoevsky. it just goes on and yes. on. I read it decades ago and I loved it, but I was like, I had lots of energy. I was a teenager, I don't know. I'm not, yeah, I'm a better reader than I used to be. So that's good. I love to read. Reading, I read every day. Um, probably the, the oh, my writing experience. I too um, do family history. And so yeah. I'm in uh, cahoots with a cousin to do, to write uh, my, my dad's side of the family. And it's been fun. I did it probably, well, maybe 20 years ago. And so this is the second go around and it's much more, um, you know, like you said, you learn about writing and you learn about what you what you like to read. And um, so that's been fun. And just that process of writing and rewriting and thinking about how to make people alive. It's just, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that. Right. As, I'm a occupational therapist by training. And so you do a lot of writing, but it's a different, <laughs> kind of, right? It's progress notes and reports. That's a very different kind of writing. So it's kind of fun to, to try out different kinds of, of things. Um, the, the, the latest book that I read that was just, I thought outstanding was, I can't remember the entire title, but it's the, the um, Crawdads Sing or the- Yep, uh, um, Delia Owens, uh, Where the Crawdads Sing. Yep. That's a brilliant book as well. well I, it kept me guessing the whole time. It was just really well done. I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always difficult when an author is jumping back and forth between time to try to yeah. make sure they keep everything straight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but did such a good job. And it's always like she just gave you a little bit to have a question and yeah. then answered it. And then she went out and put that open the door and I it was fantastic. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. That's quite a book. <laughs> it's really an impressive one. Yeah. Oh, you guys both chose books I love. That's awesome. Okay, Joanne, let's see if you're going to either give me one that I have to read or one that I've already read and loved. Okay, I'm Joanne Grievel, and I have a bachelor's in history. I'm oh. a retired librarian. Um, <laughs> wow. um, um, the, my most favorite book that I, I read recently was, believe it or not, Crime and Punishment. <laughs> I had to finish it. I had to find out what happened. And so, I mean, I just kept at it. Um, you, normally I read cozy mysteries or Agatha Christie. That's <laughs> kind it. of what I like. Um, but I, I, yeah, I had to read that. And um, as far as writing, I've written several essays for um, our County Historical Societies. They used to have an essay contest and I've written several pieces for that. Um, I also enjoy local history and genealogy, so. Awesome. Well, thank you. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna talk about today a little bit and what we're gonna work on is the idea of character in writing. And you know, you saw my show, so you know what I'm dealing with. Like I'm trying to take these characters from real life and render them entertaining in some way. And uh, there are 
one of the things I've learned is it's it's similar but different rendering a character on the stage or in a song or in a storytelling story versus a written story. And one of the things that's I learned from writing teachers is that if you um, if you have a storytelling story and you transpose transcribe it word for word, a huge amount of it is, is lost because the telling of those stories is so there's so much to the telling of you know the pauses and the voice and so in order to take a story telling story and render it interesting in the written word there's you have to massage it with a lot of detail with a lot of imagery to bring out those things so the very very different types of writing but we're going to talk about writing on paper today on uh, on the page and so i'm going to ask you guys what is character in writing if you're going to think about character what is that it's i think part of it is the um understanding why they're doing and saying um it's the doing and the saying tells you something about them mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 Beth, I'm sorry, Joanne, anything to add? I was going to say it, it the character, it's their soul. It's who they are and who they, um, who they see themselves as. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's who, just who they are. Yeah. Yeah. For the page, um, and Leroy, do you have anything to add that? Um, I, I thought those were both great. The one thing that I would add is is that character is, is where you are able to connect to them uh, as opposed to a caricature, which is just, you know, you recognize what it is, but there's no way to really have any empathy or to really think about what it's like to be that. But with a character, you can th you can put yourself there. Yeah, you 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 brought up one of my points. The the two things I was going to talk about, I was going to say was one is that it's a key element of writing. So it's it's one of the major elements in a piece of writing is the character, and the second is exactly that they are the 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 individuals that the reader relates to. So there's there's a connection between the character and the reader. And um, th these characters have identity, they act and react with one another. And what's so interesting is often they'll talk about like how the beach becomes a character in the writing. It's because the, the reader is relating so much to that setting or a building or, or an animal that they become characters in the piece. So the, the next, you know, we've all heard in writing that, uh, that, that old, age old saying that is very useful still show don't tell right we don't want to talk about it we don't want to say he was sad we want to say his cheeks got warm and the tears fell down and dripped along and, and made stains on his t-shirt i mean you want those images that you see or you hear or you feel or you smell or you taste so that you can really because those your your senses like the reader's senses are the relating points to the character, which is why we need to show and not tell. So we're going to play a game using a couple of references from my memoir. So I, I wrote this memoir called 100 Miles to Nowhere about uh, moving from New York City to New York Mills and falling in love with this central Minnesotan who, you know, my family of uh, my parents are Israeli. Uh, my family is, um, we're Ashkenazi Jews. I mean, we're, we're like, so far from you know central Minnesota and I come here and I fall in love with a guy and so I have to describe him in this book so that the reader meets him as I'm meeting him and sees him as I see him because it's from my point of view okay so I'm going to read you a little segment and you're and we're going to ask three questions what did I show how did I show it and what did you, what else did you learn or what did you learn Okay, on page 15, he is described by the executive director of the New York Mills Cultural Center. Chris Klein is one of our board members. He's an experienced outdoorsman, a triathlete, works in his family's insurance business, and is an all-around good guy. He's got a sparkle to him. Okay, so this is kind of a trick one because 
I'm also telling in here, right? So there's a lot of telling and description, but it's in dialogue. And therefore you kind of get a little bit of leeway to tell. But what did I show by having the executive director tell me these things? Are you asking for an answer? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say there's a, a sense of um, authority or trusted source. There you go, right? So I showed that he gets some respect by having someone respectable say those things. Okay, uh, did you learn anything else about Chris in this little snippet? An outdoorsman, very personable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See. Okay. So another section. Um, I discover a message on my answering machine. Hello, this is Christopher Klein calling you back. A cheerful masculine baritone surfed the diatonic scale, rel relishing every wave and curl of each long, flat nasal vowel. I stopped breathing for a second. It's a beautiful day here in West Central Minnesota, he said in the practiced swagger of a radio DJ. So what did I show? How did I show it? And what did you learn? Or what else did you learn? Um, sound. Sound. Sure. Sound, the, the way his voice pronounced the words. And so the words that he said, yes, but you can really picture in your mind the way that, that voice would come through. And you weren't just excited. You 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 caught your breath. Mm -hmm. You know, so you that, that feeling of what happened. Yeah, yeah. I showed a reaction. Now that could have been a number of reactions, right? Like I stopped breathing. It could be all sorts of things. I hated him. I loved him. The sound was weird. The sound was wonderful. I mean, you don't quite know, but you know there was a physical reaction there. Anything else you want to add to that one? I got two more for you. Okay, next one. So um, now it's it's not the first time I meet him, but it's the second time I meet him and we're about to go on a three day, two night canoe camping trip, just the two of us. Like second time I meet him and he's picking me up to go on this camping trip. The Chris who floated through the door seemed taller than the one I had met a few days before. Triathlon defined muscles on his chest and arms made attractive ridges in the fabric of his t-shirt. What did I show? How did I show it? And what else did you learn? Uh, uh, he wasn't just happy. He floated. Or he wasn't just confident. He floated. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Uh, did you notice? The, go ahead. I was say, you noticed his athletic build. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he seemed taller to you kind of like he's gone up in your estimation of him. Yes. Nice. The narrator has changed her opinion. Things have shifted. No. And that's all shown. Like, I don't say I like him better now. I show it now. Okay, last one. So this is after he asks me out and I say no for the first time. Chris walked me home, his body solid and strong in the dark next to mine and said goodbye from the stoop, hands in his pockets. What did I show? How did I show it? What else did you learn? That's a harder one. Um, I kind of show that I might be having some doubts, but that he's not, he's not mean. So mm -hmm. I, I say no to him, but you, you can see that he is a solid guy and yep. he's, I mean, he still walks you home. Yep. You can tell he's disappointed though, because yeah. he's physically yeah. reserved. But respectful nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in my longer classes, I share a few more. And um, uh, my my favorite response from uh, from the audience, from my from the participants in the workshop was uh, a woman at the end where I was like, oh, say, so what did you learn from these? And she's like that you should have fallen for him a lot earlier than you did, which is kind of funny. I really like that response. OK, so here's. Um, one of the important things that I've learned in writing is the, the importance of the least expected detail. So when you're describing someone, you know, you could say a million things about anybody. Like there are literally a million things you could say, but you don't have room for a million things. You have room for maybe three, 
you know, in the beginning and then a few more as you go. And you have to be very selective about the details you focus on because you're, you are basically the camera, which is only seeing this much of a room and you're showing the reader that thing. So you have to choose which thing you're showing in this entire world that we experience. And so the least expected detail is usually the one that's going to catch them. You know, the, the thing that is surprising and unique about an individual, those are what you want to focus on. Because anybody, you know, how many people have brown hair? You know, how many people have, you know, stubble? I mean, you want to be very specific. So the other thing I want to talk about in nonfiction character writing is there are two individuals you're writing, right? So, well, there's the real individual, and then there's the version of them you're putting on the page they're related but they're not the same thing and and that's important to recognize because you have no control over the reaction of people to how you've portrayed them and there are many there's a whole you know world of ethics about how you portray people that you're who are real people and you need to make your own decisions about that but what's you do want to definitely tread lightly when you're dealing with real people who might read your work and you have to decide what you're willing to to accept in their reaction before you put them on paper. And I'll give you an example. Um, the, the neighbor in my book, so I have a neighbor who is basically the antag antagonist or one of the antagonists in my book. And I had to be very, very careful because I knew he would end up reading it one day, I, or I thought he might. Uh, I had to be very careful with how I portrayed him. And when I actually got the call that the book was gonna get published, I was I was terrified because I was like, oh my gosh, I. I don't know how this guy's going to react because he's like a he's he's the kind of guy who um, is not collected connected to the grid he's got his own power he's got you know months of food and um he's very uh, specific in how he relates to the bible and what he thinks of people who don't the way he does and so it was very it was a it was a nerve-wracking scenario for me but what i ended up choosing to do was as soon as they got published I, I went to him and I handed him the book and I said, you're in this, I want you to read it. But in terms of the writing, I definitely kind of smoothed some of the details. I made him interesting like he was, but I kind of might have, you know, some of the more offensive things. And when people are no longer with us, you have a little more leeway, but just something that to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do an activity now because I don't wanna keep you here too long because, you know, we all get Zoom fatigue. So I'm gonna have you write. Oh, I don't that you know when you're writing family history you're only writing it from what people have told you or what i remember because we're including we're 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 uh the, the 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 family history we're doing now is up to the point of our grandparents and uh -huh. so lots of people know them and um and 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 so there's still that there's still that obligation to honor people's memories Yes. You know, um, and I, I, I'll never forget this, um, this cousin that I'm working with, um, I said, well, you know, Queen Anne w would do such and so. And he's like, who's that? I was like, that's your grandma. People called her that. <laughs> uh, you know, they meant it in, I mean, for me, she was kind of a majestic uh, matriarch. Um, I don't know that everybody thought that of her, but uh, that's what I told him. And I believe that. Um, but it, so yeah, anytime that, especially if you're dealing with those family memories and it's interesting, mm -hmm. I agree. So good for you for taking on live people. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, I'm gonna make you guys work for a moment. I'm gonna have you number down the side of your page, number one to 15, one number per line. And we're going to do an exercise about character and um, what I what I want to clarify to share with you is that you know those of us who do anything artistic or creative or pretty much anything you don't have to be creative, we have this inner critic right this voice in our head that's like that's terrible, why would you say that what are you even thinking trying to write family history or write a novel or even get on stage, I mean we all have that voice in our heads. Um, some of us have them louder than others, and sometimes they're using a megaphone, which is always a bad moment. Uh, but one of the ways that you can sidestep the inner critic is if you go very fast, so if you write fast. And this is an exercise I learned taking a class with Julia Cameron, the, uh, the writer-author of The Artist's Way, who uh, I got to study with personally, which was kind of amazing. So uh, 
we're going to number down from 115. So once you've got all your numbers written down, let me know. Everyone got their numbers, 115. Okay. What I want you to do is list the most interesting people you can think of in your life. And just write. Keep your hand moving. Okay, how are you doing? Good work. Okay. All right. So now what I want you to do is go back into your list and right next to every name, I want you to write one interesting thing about that person and make it the least expected thing if you can. So if you can think of, you know, something really interesting, but go fast. So, you know, if it's the first thing you think of and it's not the least expected thing, that's okay. Just go fast. Something that stands out about this individual. All right, um, I'll have each of you share a couple of a uh, pairing, uh, two pairings of an interesting person and an interesting characteristic about them. Leroy, you want to start? Sure. Um, so one of the interesting people in, in my life is my older brother. Um, he, uh, he might watch this someday, so I'm not sure what I should say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, some, something interesting um, that you know people don't expect is uh, he once had to have back surgery in a Tunisian hospital, um, and was laid up for three months in a hospital in Tunisia, in North Africa. So um, <laughs> that's something. Yeah, and so that has all sorts of other story things related to that. Um, and he said right fast, and so uh, I I had uh, just pop into my head a substitute teacher I had in high school by the name of wow. Mr. Horn. And he was interesting because uh, he had retired from teaching after 40 years. And uh, every day, and so I don't know if he had multiple copies of it or, or whatnot, every day he wore a banana yellow suit. That's amazing. Right? I kind of want to every teacher. day, right? Um, I, I get believe he's uh, and then uh, my Aunt Joanne, uh, she's an amazing lady. Um, she's also written a book. Uh, she writes nonfiction. Um, and uh, one of the things that I just remember growing up is how put together she always looked. And, and then I found out that that's because she had her makeup tattooed onto her face. So her makeup is tattooed. Wow. So she's always put together. Very so. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, okay, Beth, go for it. Two people. Um, I have, um, one of the guys I work with, he's, um, and he, he is, um, 
kind and put together and able to really be direct. Um, but then I found out that he had been fired once. Um, he was kind of the fall guy for a bigger ego. Somehow came back and now is, um, you know, an administrator and, and is a great leader. And I just really admire that about him. Um, another one I put was um, that, um, uh, so uh, another really interesting person to me is, is my grandma B and um, her too, you know, that she had this interesting life that, and one of the things um, I learned about her was that she was the valedictorian of her class and so won a scholarship, but this was, you know, around the, um, in the early um, 1900s and she actually gave her scholarship to her sister um, you could do that then, uh, because her sister, um, because of things outside of her control, didn't wasn't able to go on to school um, and do some things. But she was give her scholarship, went to school, and she became a teacher. So to give up and and always, my grandmother always wanted to be a nurse and wanted, but she gave that up for her sister, and that was just such an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Joanne. Um, well, I was listening to everyone else and, um, I guess my grandma Sturm, she's passed away, but, um, she used to sew doll clothes. She sewed Barbie doll clothes. She sewed mm. baby doll clothes. Um, and at that time she sewed them for the missions. Mm. Um, and a lot of people in the parish would just bring used clothing to her to read repurpose into these doll clothes and I remember she'd get these crinoline petticoats and we got to play dress up in them but she also would use those for like um Barbie doll wedding dresses and things oh. like that yeah. um she you know was a very quiet lady but she she loved to do that kind of stuff with the little tiny buttons and and all of that um I don't know. I don't have anyone that's done anything really so unique as you know, a yellow suit or something like that. I've had a couple of former co-workers. I'm retired and I've had a couple of former co-workers who um, really went above and beyond in teaching and um, always seemed to, to know when you needed someone to listen or um, yeah, they, they, they just went above and beyond, not only for the students, but for the, their staff and the, their fellow um, staff members. Okay, I'm gonna make you go a little further. And we're gonna talk about, um, we're gonna go into, I'm trying to think because we don't have a lot of time to all my exercises, but let's do senses. So we're going to, um, get into our characters' heads, and I want you to choose one character from your list or one individual that you want to write about from your list and get into their heads. So, you know, don't don't choose someone you're a little scared to get in their heads because that won't be fun. Uh, but what we're going to do is because the way that we relate to story and words is via our senses, so sight, smell, taste, hearing, touch, these are the images that we will relate to as readers or that your readers will relate to. And so what I want to do is take you into a, your character and their point of view and think of a place where that character might go. So first, choose your character. First one that comes to your mind is just fine. Second, choose a place that character would go. Like it could be mundane, like the bathroom. It could be, you know, if they're a teacher, the teacher's lounge or their classroom or whatever it might be. So choose one place, so one character, one place. And now I'm gonna ask you to write. The first thing I want you to do, this is pretty quick, is name three things in this place that your character is that they see, three things they see. Okay, three things your character smells now. You can probably figure out where I'm going with all of these. 
So three things they see, three things they smell. Now, three things they hear in this place. Now, three things your character might taste. And that's a weird one, but you can taste the air or you can talk about some kind of food that might be in this place that you might taste. Or they, I'm sorry, that the character might taste. Three things they might taste. And finally, of course, three things they could touch and what it feels like. Okay, are you guys close to ready? I've got one more exercise for you before we share. I write slow. Okay, no problem. We are not writing speedists here. I think Joanne must write fast because you're always looking up first. Yeah, I write fast. Can't always read it later, but I write fast. Right? That'd be the, that's the hard part of that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to bring you to the next exercise. So you can stop what, you know, however many you got there, because this is my favorite exercise and I want to do it before we have to close. And so the first, so take that character that you've been writing about, and now we're not going to be in their head. Uh, I guess you could be, but really I want you to think about them. And this is sort of an exercise in showing. So a way to show or describe your character in a way that brings them directly into a reader's understanding in a very unique way. Okay, so I'm gonna ask if your character were a blank, what would he or she be? And then I'm gonna fill in the blank for each of these. Okay, so the first blank we're gonna talk about is, and by the way, First thing that comes into your head, because these are hard, but just whatever comes in your head, do it. Okay. If your character, get your character in your mind, were an animal, what animal would that character be? First thing that comes to mind, write down. Second, if your character were a piece of music, what piece of music would they be? whatever comes to your mind it, as crazy as it may be okay third if your character were a food what kind of food would they be could be something they eat could be something they kind of look like and finally if your character were a place or a location what place or location they would be for instance leroy's bro brother might be a market in tunisia who knows Okay, so can you, repeat, can you repeat the last question? Uh, so uh, if you're so we have animal piece of music food or location or place location or place. Okay, so now um, in our last few minutes, I would like everyone to share one or two things that you wrote down in the last few exercises that ideally that surprised you or that you really liked. Let us start with Joanne. Um, my character is my grandma. And um, I picture her in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
surrounded by bread pans and cookie cutters. Oh, I love it. Um, the the old of the wood oven there, wood stove oven. Um, she's smelling yeast and vanilla and molasses. Um, she hears kids playing outside. The cows are bellowing in the pasture. And I know you can't really hear snow falling, but yeah, snow falling. Oh my gosh, Joanne, I just like saw your grandmother and was there. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, and the things that she's feeling are the sticky bread dough, oh. the rolling pin with all the flour on it, and the hot pans as she's taking them out of the oven. We're there, right? Like you can see how that is so. Yeah, I can. I can see you there because my uncle, um, he used to tell us about all these cookies that Grandma would make at Christmas time. I mean, crocks full, red wing crocks full of cookies, and they'd be in a spare room where they'd be a little cooler, and the kids would sneak upstairs, you know, and sneak cookies out of the crocks. Amazing. So. <laughs> All right, Beth, and, your turn. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. okay. Beth, why don't you share something from the writings okay. you did? So, uh, so I'm thinking about um, this, this, the man that I work with, um, Scott, and um, I was thinking about him in that moment of, of the fall, you know, like he's taken the fall for a whole bunch of people. He's being fired and um and so he's standing in front of a window where it's um you know he's seeing this bright light and the trees are waving and he's smelling kind of the dust in his own skin and he's feeling like his shirt and maybe um he's feeling um his throat feels tight and there's stubble and so he's feeling perhaps he's feeling the stubble or the buttons on his shirt um and then so I'm thinking about that. And then we went into the next thing. And, and the first animal that came to mind was an elephant. Mm -hmm. Not because he's a big guy, but, but, but it was like this solid moment. Yes, very nice. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and I was surprised that the music was a march, you know, kind of a heavy Ooh. thing. I can see him. That's amazing. <laughs> this was fun. Um, and then I thought of uh, like, uh, if it was a place, I mean, I didn't have a, uh, my first thoughts were like he was standing in a room with a window, but then when you said if he was a place, it was like he was a cemetery, like there was this, these solid, uh, he's surrounded by this solid stone with these things, you and, know. That and you know what else, like not only the solid stone, but also the death of his career. Yeah. That's yeah. vibrant wow yeah that was this was fun that was really cool yeah thank yeah. <laughs> you i love that exercise too leroy um uh, i picked uh another person on my list that i didn't talk about earlier um who is a uh, an inspiration to me uh his name is bob and uh, bob was a mentor in 12-step programs uh for many people and had over 40 years of sobriety um and uh, he went through quite a bit, you know, when he'd share his story with people. Um, but he, um, I picture him in a room in his apartment. He's just finished eating breakfast. You know, he's, he's kind of got himself ready for the day. Uh, and he's, he's had these 40 years of sobriety because he's, he's pulled himself into this creature of 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 iron habit in that he just every day one day at a time he he focuses and and follows his routine and when you said what animal um you know first thing that came to my mind was a badger and bob is not a physically imposing person but then i realized that you know this that makes a lot of sense because he's just he he doesn't make a lot of noise when he's in his space uh, but, but he's confident and, you know, he's, he's not going anywhere. Um, he's staying where he is, uh, and, um, just, uh, you know, in that room, there's a, a chair upholstered all the 1970s, um, that, uh, you know, you can feel the texture of it as he sits down because he hears the vibration of his cell phone, uh, on, on the table next to it, because, 
he's always there whenever anyone needed to call. Mm. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. Oh, it's that really vibration guy. of the cell phone. I mean, that is so vivid with the guy who everyone calls of their sobriety. Oh my gosh. Wow. You guys, I should probably should close up so we don't get you exhausted from Zoom. <laughs> I want to thank you guys. I loved hearing Beth, Joanne, Leroy. I loved hearing your characters and the details that you created for them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm so glad. Yeah, Leave them wanting more. That's yes. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, we're we're very grateful for the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund making this happen. So if you like programs like this, by all means, please, you know, encourage us to, to keep finding more and, and maybe someday we'll even be able to have her come in person. So I would love that. That would be great. I need, we need so. to go out for dinner and I want to hear all about the details of your very interesting background. Okay. <laughs> and then Joanne and Beth, you have to come too. Okay. Sounds good. good. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, Thanks, everyone. And thank you so thank much, Elisa. Thank you so much. Thanks, Leroy. Bye. Bye. Thanks to the New Home Public Library. Bye. Bye.